Hey guys, welcome to a Guineas and Chill video, and today we'll be looking at how safe is the King of Random. I have this safety scale I made. It goes from no dangerous to absurdly dangerous. I already have done two, um, can a flamethrower melt snow, which is 13, because, like, I'll show you. I'll tell you. It didn't do anything to the snow, but it made like... me very happy. So amazingly, that's like the exact same thing that was happening outside. Yeah. You just couldn't you see, could it not see it outside. Ethanol burns very light colored, like compared to. Yeah, they were burning methanol, which is incredibly poisonous. They were also pressurizing an old fire extinguisher and burn it no this is like sort of dangerous the fire hazard and some of the dust could be dangerous so we're gonna do this in today's video we've got a few fun experiments to see what happens when we burn things in liquid oxygen In a previous video, you saw us try to burn diamonds, and we succeeded, and we had the help Oops. of Alexander. My internet's been bad today. Don't know why. Alexander is with us again. He's our go-to science guy who also tells us, like, oh, you'll blow the house up if you try. Yeah, they probably will. Try that, so he kind of keeps us in check while also encouraging us to do more fun stuff. That looks just the kind of influence safe. we like to have around. He tells us how to safely do dangerous things. Uh, for those who may just not remember. Oh, you should not try any of these at home. I found like the videos that looked the most. For you, what unsafe. are what are you studying these days? I'm studying metallurgical engineering, and I'm almost done with my degree, and then hopefully going to graduate school. In in what was that? The the nuclear. Uh, nuclear engineering? Nuclear engineering or material science engineering. So totally he knows normal. a lot of things, uh, which is why we like to have him around. <laughs> and he's the one who sort of introduced us to this idea, so we wanted to have him on the show to show us some of his favorite things to put in liquid oxygen. Let's get started. Here's the basic idea. We've got liquid oxygen, and we've got a few different things that should burn fair. Yeah, don't do this because... Burning some materials can release fairly well, like chloride, because of PVC. So, and we want to see if we can make them burn really well by immersing them in liquid oxygen. So we've got oxygen flowing into this coil right now, and pretty soon, right then, we're going to get a little stream of liquid oxygen coming out the other end. So we're just going to wait for this cup to fill up. I would give this right now, like, on the hazard scale, probably about, like, a 8 or a 7, like a 7.5. Actually, no, I just give it a 7, because it's explosive and liquid oxygen can, if it gets on your skin, it will freeze you, and also getting... Oxidizers on your skin is not good. And then we can do some fun experiments. Okay, the first recipe we call for about a cup of liquid oxygen and a graham cracker. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> so we've got this graham cracker very thoroughly uh, marinated, for lack of a better word, <laughs> in the liquid. This, I guess, isn't dangerous. It's not that dangerous. It's just a graham cracker. It's like wheat. So it's organic material. Put oxygen, we're going to put it down on the concrete, and then, Nate, would you do the, uh... Bake at 3,000 for, yeah. <laughs> for five seconds. I'm already thrilled. In case you're curious, that is not how normal graham crackers burn. Should we have, have a side-by-side -side for comparison? We can, we Holy can. Holy cow. I also have a flammability scale that I made for a different thing. Uh, that would probably be like a, um, what would it be? Uh, it'd probably be about an 
Wow, the heat that that puts off. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Here's how normal graham crackers burn. They don't. <laughs> I mean, that it, is, it burns. That's like a three. Burn like as long charred. as the torches. It's probably possible. To Wait, is it three? Yeah, that's like a three. Will it actually light I don't it think on that's fire? a burn. I think that's a char. Let's get our grams out. All right, here, here is one gram cracker. And I hear we have a marshmallow. As <laughs> it sizzles. Self-cooking s'mores. <laughs> Self-cooking s'mores. Now I bet to burn your house down. <laughs> That's just how I like my s'mores. I'm thrilled. Yeah, and cinnamon. Mmm, oxygen. Did I actually eat that? I guess all of the oxygen would have been burned away. But... So this is the control. About half of this, probably more like two-thirds of the... When it gets... seriously. There we go. Liquid oxygen on sparkles. So obviously, soaking not graham crackers in liquid oxygen and lighting I, them off wasn't dangerous. And I cannot imagine how dangerous it would be to mix magnesium and liquid oxygen. Magnesium will pull the oxygen out of almost anything. You pour rust on magnesium, it will turn into iron and, like, oxygen to oxidize it you cover it in dry ice notorious for putting out fires it will turn the dry ice into an oxidize it turns it into carbon and oxygen so can't be good to oxidize it on purpose enough so let's try some sparklers materials this seems put like it a great idea put it out. all right so since we're not exactly sure what this is going to do what kind of reaction it's uh going to yeah exactly it's probably going like explode also it's probably burn it's probably gonna burn like 5,000 it it's probably gonna burn hotter than an acetylene torch because like it's just gonna burn really Oxygen. hot. We want to make sure that we're being as safe as we can be within reason. So since these have a little steel stem on them, we just took a scrap piece of 2x4 and a magnet, and if we stick it on the end, you can see that we can kind of suspend this, and then we can- I don't know how safe that is. I feel like that could burn. Can be as far away as this piece of uh, wood allows us to be, like and if still that have the desired burning. Then it would just like burn the wood. Reaction. Okay. So sparkler is burning. Let's just gently. Wait, what is that? That does not Let's look just like gently. Li is that? That looks like liquid ozone. It's got that purplish look to it. It's actually, oh, there goes the cup. That's not that bad. Doesn't seem to make much difference wow. to it, honestly. No. Yeah. Magnesium is, it's, it pulls so much oxygen out of the air, it is fully oxidized almost always. Even if you throw it in, you could probably throw that in the bottom of the sea and it would burn. It's not really having much of an effect one way or the other. It's just breaking the cup. It, it, it's breaking the cup, but it also, uh, it, it tainted our liquid oxygen. Can you see that? Yeah, it looks like, am I crazy or was that longer? Do you see the little beads of molten metal there? I think it actually melted the stick. Here was uh, one that burned without that. Wow. So we've, there we we've go. lost so, a significant amount of yeah, the, way the little handle on it. We've done this several times now. Well, not this particular thing, but we've dropped lots of different things into the liquid oxygen in one of these cups. This cup is just shattered to bits. All right. Cotton burns. Everybody knows that. This is a piece of cotton cloth. So for a control test. They actually did another video where they put 
like liquid oxygen on cotton and i think it detonated there was like some liquid oxygen fumes or something and they took a torch up to it and there was like a and there was like a high speed detonation like it was like a like those propane poppers yeah it's 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 on fire there you go so that's how a normal piece of uh, cotton cloth would burn so your t-shirt that's how that would burn okay let's go yeah yeah it's gonna Woo! there we go (laughs) and then just all went up at once (gasps) yeah very short high intensity reaction yeah not a long lifespan there but really cool this time we're just gonna get this burning we're gonna have liquid oxygen in the glass we're gonna get this burning and just drop it in (laughs) and it just disappeared does my quality like 380p the internet today is acting it's gone very nice it's just gone yeah oh that makes me so happy there is nothing left Okay, so what we're going to do right now is a very similar setup to what we did before with the sparkler. Steel wool also reacts very well with oxygen. If you've ever put a 9-volt battery on it, lit a small amount on fire. Mm, This, I predict, will burn. Maybe... Mm, I don't know. ...fire and then blown on it, you know that the more air you supply to it, the faster it burns. But I don't know if it'll burn that much faster. So our question is, what's going to happen if we put it in an environment that is 100% oxygen? So again, since we're not exactly sure what this is going to do and we suspect it's going to be quite energetic, we are going to take this and since it is magnetic, use our little magnet jig here and just pull it. It'll fall into that bowl full of liquid oxygen after it's been lit on fire, and hopefully we will get a very exciting result. Ready? Yo, what the heck just happened? It's like a Three, two, one. (laughs) Goodbye, Um, bull. Right now, I'd give this video about, let's check the danger rating to see what I, um, probably, Probably a six right now. Look look at all of the little bits of molten metal that coalesced on the bowl. That bowl has given up. What did he just do? Uh, yeah, that gets an eight because I don't know about burning polystyrene, but pretty sure some of the fumes it can release can be sort of nasty to inhale. That looks really cool. All right, so Alex, what's the next plan? That's some black smoke. That can be. Well, the next plan is we're going to scale it up a little bit. So we've previously been doing I guess he knows what he's doing, but I still think that's Just unsafe. maybe a few tens of grams of this steel wool here, and we're going to do two entire pads of it. So <laughs> according to my oh, no. um, preliminary calculations, this should release approximately the same amount of energy that's required to light a standard light bulb for 40 minutes. And we're going to be doing that in a very short period of time. So we're expecting this to be very energetic. We're going to use the magnet rig, but since it's a little bit windy out here, we've modified it, so instead we're just going to lower it in 
on a string, but I'll still be back in safety and we should get some really nice uh, footage of the reaction. And, and this cup is ceramic, not yes. styrofoam. Yeah, so hopefully it will last for long enough for all of the steel to react. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> Oh, there's a puddle of liquid oh, metal. Oh, nice! Is what? that just liquid steel? That's Holy just steel. Cow. That is so much better than I had hoped. They didn't focus on it very well, apparently. All right, so one thing that I've always heard as kind of a danger of liquid oxygen is, and this is true, it makes everything extremely flammable. One of the common anecdotes that they use is, let's say you're pouring it in a room with carpet and a little bit spills on the floor, and then there's a static shock, the carpet might ignite and- This is actually why I clicked on the video, because um, some carpet burning can release um fumes that are incredibly burn poisonous. very rapidly i've never actually seen that done i believe that carpet will become extremely flammable with liquid oxygen but i actually have a little test square of carpet here that i would like to uh, see if that anecdote is true so let's give it a try so after some careful consideration, we've decided that since this is made of polyester, it's probably going to have a much more energetic reaction even than all the other experiments we've done. For that reason, we are going to use the sparkler on the end of this PVC pole to ignite it, and that way we will be a safe distance away from any uh, explosions which may occur. So I'm gonna light the sparkler, and then I'm very quickly gonna start pouring liquid oxygen over the carpet square, then I'll back a good ways away, at which point Alexander We'll, uh, we'll prod the- What type of styrofoam are they using? I watched a guy, um, pour liquid nitrogen on styrofoam and it soaked through, so... The styrofoam oxygen soaked cups carpet square be, with the sparkler. Like, different and I'll be over just, here. Like, far. <laughs> fully styrene you buy. Not like high density, just like that. Looks exactly like All that. right. Three. Must have like a coating two, on it. One. <laughs> <laughs> There's no carpet left. <laughs> that was pretty bad. All that's Instant. left is the backing on the carpet, which what? apparently is not made of the same. Well, I guess at least the backing didn't burn, and I think the backing of some carpet can be poisonous. So Material is the rest of the carpet. Good. Wow, that was, um, that, awesome. was, that was amazing. <laughs> that was rather energetic. <laughs> As it turns out, the uh, anecdote is true. If you pour liquid oxygen on uh, carpet, it becomes extremely, extremely flammable. I don't think that even classifies as flammable. Mm. That, is really that might that even might be, be explosive. explosive. Yeah, that black smoke probably contains, like, mercury. Because I looked up burning carpet when I saw this. I think that it can release mercury. All right, that was, <laughs> that was so cool. Okay, so let's, let's read this video. I'm going to put it in here. Liquid oxygen and carpet. Seven point five. That's a three, not a five. 
Hey guys, I'm Nate. Welcome back to the Dome, where today we're going to be doing some experiments using salt and seeing what happens if we melt it down in our foundry. Uh, actually, I'm not... Hold on. Let's not do this one. Will frozen gasoline... What's up, guys? We're back in the lab See? today with a water bottle, a blowtorch, a box of matches, and an oversized martini glass, because Darshan Mathukia wants to know what would happen if we tried freezing gasoline, then lighting it on fire. Freezing gasoline and liquid nitrogen is one of my highest requested videos right now, and this comment got over 418 likes in one hour. That's why we're doing it today. Will frozen gasoline burn? That's the question we're here to answer today. I want to tell you about my water bottle. Yes, this actually is my water bottle, but just a few minutes ago, I ran down to the gas station and filled it up with 91 octane. What? <laughs> um, no. Does he realize how dangerous ingesting gasoline is? How dangerous is swallowing gasoline? Twelve ounces of gasoline can kill you. That, what, why? In premium gasoline. That the octane rating refers second. to how much pressure the gasoline can take before igniting, and I got the highest stuff we could get. Now we know that gasoline in its normal state is a liquid, and it's highly combustible. It's extremely flammable, and it's what we use to run our vehicles. If we pour a bit of it onto my brick, it's also carcinogenic, and you should never put it in a water bottle. Here and light it off. You can. See why? Why didn't he just use- why didn't he use, like, an actual gas can? Why? Why did he put gasoline in a water bottle? That's a terrible idea. Don't leave, like, hate comments, but seriously, no. Planes. The question, though, becomes, what will happen to frozen gasoline? Gasoline has a freezing point anywhere between minus 40 to minus 50 Fahrenheit and Celsius, so we could probably use liquid propane. What? So it simultaneously freezes at negative 40 and also like negative 100. So I guess if you bring gasoline to like Russia in the winter, it'll freeze. Propane, liquid butane, or anything else like that to freeze it. But for quickness and convenience like in this project, I'm going back to my old winter. friend liquid nitrogen. So first things first, we need to transfer our liquid nitrogen into our giant martini glass, and hopefully it doesn't break as we do. All right, that's enough to make me feel uncomfortable. Here comes the boil, this is my favorite part. Whoa! Uh-oh. If that glass lets go, it's gonna spill. It's sort of dangerous, because liquid nitrogen like, even if you wipe it off, it I think it can soak through your skin, and then you could have, like, cryogenic liquid in your bloodstream. It wouldn't be good. I don't think that also you could get, like, a nitrogen bubble, which it's not Go good. all over the workbench. It's cracked like crazy on the bottom there. And it's working its way up like spider webs. Oh, no! Oh, it's all spilling down the side here. Look at this. Look at this. We've got a leak. That's not good. Our martini glass has turned into a spider web of cracks. That didn't really take very long. And honestly, I wasn't expecting anything different, but that is $13 down the drain. Okay, I am gonna see if I can salvage any of this nitrogen here. Probably more than $13 of liquid nitrogen. So, liquid nitrogen in a martini glass? Not so much. <laughs> All right. He did that. There's no way he did that on Max. He probably Attempt did number that two, on ceramic purpose. bowl. Look at the way it boils up around the edges. It's jumping to get out of the bowl. All right, guys, it looks like our liquid nitrogen has sufficiently cooled. What's really interesting, it takes so much nitrogen to cool the dish down, we lose more than half of the bowl just in the cooling process alone. Now, you know that nitrogen itself is not flammable. 
We can demonstrate that by dipping a match into it here. And you can see the match goes out as soon as it hits that top layer of nitrogen. The time has come to add our gasoline, and what I'm thinking is we'll just pour a few drops in there and see what happens. Here we go. Oh, wow. Interesting. That looked Look how dense cool. that vapor is. It turned white and came out like a mushroom cloud. And if I push that away, you can actually see the gasoline is floating on top of the nitrogen right there. That's interesting. And it's still liquid. It hasn't frozen yet. It's almost like it's got a protective coating around it. Yeah, probably it's probably being held up by the lead and frost effect, I'd assume. But there, it's starting to get hard now. Perfect. We've got a very small sample size here I'm pretty comfortable with. So let's go ahead and- Imagine how weird that would be. Like, sub-liquid gasoline? Where it's like, not quite a liquid, but it's also like, not quite a gas, like metal. It could be like, moldable gas. That's an interesting idea. That would be kind of useful. But Pull that out and light it off. Really exist. There we go. There we go, my friends. That is frozen gasoline. I'm Just actually going to pour a little bit more in there. That is so cool. I've never seen this before. I wasn't expecting. Yeah, it's the water bottle of death, which is like, why? It's such a rich white fog. Ooh, look at that. It's like a gasoline slushy. Well, it's actually like solidified into a bunch of globs of gasoline. The thing that's really interesting to me about this is how white the gasoline is. I thought it would have more of a yellowish tinge to it, but that's pretty clear, pretty white. Very impressive. What happens if I pull one of these pieces out? The gasoline melts extremely quickly, so I'm dipping my tongs in here to cool them I down. I cannot imagine touching that. Gasoline is a car- Gasoline is carcinogenic. Well, it's a little bit, so I would never touch that. And that'll give us a little bit more time to work with this stuff. We'll hold them in the tongs, light the edge, and see what happens. Here we go. Frozen gasoline versus fire in three, two, one. Whoa! Interesting. Okay, let's read this. Hmm. I'm gonna say... Just because of how he did that, nine. Oops. Yes. Nine. I don't know. I might as I kinda wanna skip this. Like he's he's doing it outside. I don't think that's one's gonna be the most dangerous. So I don't know if you noticed that, but the second the oh, two wow. made contact, it spittled and almost exploded. I saw it kind of like, it almost looked like white flames. It happened very fast. But it definitely lit off, and as the flames grew, it melted all the gasoline and just burned like normal. That was interesting. Let's do some more. Three, two, one. Amazing! So will frozen gasoline burn? Apparently it does, and it takes off with a very, very vigorous ignition. Why? This is so dangerous. Not only is he putting, like, a carcinogen that's poisonous, like, ha like, six ounces of it can kill you. Why? He's also lighting fires inside of a house. Ah, uh, this is so dangerous. This is concerning. So for this next experiment, I'm thinking let's just scoop up a bunch of chunks on a frozen spoon like this and touch a match to the top and see what they do when they're all congregated together. 
Mmm, gasoline soup. Cool, here we go. What? Yeah, gasoline... Gasoline soup. Giving you cancer, I guess. Holy uh, heck. I mean, I guess it could be worse if he was burning leaded gas, but, like... Yeah, it'd be worse if he was born in tetraethyl lead in his house. I think my dad actually has some tetraethyl lead because we have, like, an old car that uses that it. That was vigorous. Oh, my bench. Workbench is on fire. <laughs> Oops. Lights his house on fire. <laughs> and here's the best part. A little nitrogen vapor waterfall. Yeah, he's putting it out. Battle of the elements. Hot versus cold. Hot is winning. Let's try at the base here. Our nitrogen fire. This reminds me of a video from the Backyard Scientist where he also did something incredibly dangerous, but this is a TKO or based video. The King of Random. He poured, like, diethyl ether on a pool and lit it on fire. That's dangerous for multiple reasons. I mean, diethyl ether is poisonous and explosive. And he poured it in a pool where people would be swimming. And then it was burning, but then he put it out while it was still burning. So he probably still left, like, diethyl ether in the pool. Our I guess that was a really pretty cool idea. So, did you see how vigorous that reaction was? Like, the second I put the flame into the spoon, it was just pop, crackle, pop, crackle, and it just went crazy. Almost explosive, which is very interesting. So I think at this point, it's pretty much confirmed. Frozen gasoline does burn, even at the temperatures of liquid nitrogen. And what's really interesting is how much energy it still has at those cryogenic temperatures. Let's do it again. It spits. And then the rest turns to gel. Gel gas flame. Quick, use the nitrogen fire extinguisher. Is there actually like is there Oh. Guess they do. Oh, look at that. You could probably buy one for, like, I don't know, oil fires? What application? What application would, like, nitrogen have? It might be good for, like, mm, white phosphorus. We got a river of nitrogen flowing through the center of a valley of fire. I'm just playing with it a little. I could put it out if I wanted to. Whoa! That's cool. The way they dance around. That's neat! So for this last experiment, I'm going to try pouring a whole bunch of gasoline in at once to see if we can freeze one big giant solid chunk. That's quite a bit. You can see a little... Yeah, using gasoline water bottle of death and why. Bubbles and spats of gasoline freezing. It almost freezes like ice. I mean, that looks really cool. That, look, that does look really cool. You know, one thing I'm thinking, what would happen if you took a match and threw it in to the gasoline and nitrogen combined? Would it even light off or would the nitrogen vapor suppress the ignition? If it does go off, it's going to be a pretty dramatic display. I don't know what's going to happen. My guess is that the flame will go out, but if it doesn't, this is going to be spectacular. Here we go. Ah! Nitrogen barrier. Let's see that again. I'm a little more- If that would have lit off, I, it probably would have caused an explosion. More confident this time. Here comes the flame. Can't even get to the gasoline. Here, let's do this. Let's light a little bit of gasoline up here and then put it down into the mix and it goes out. Whew. That's pretty cool. 
All right, guys, for one grand finale, we're gonna light a match and throw it into this container with gasoline and nitrogen combined. There's a lot of gasoline in there and the pillars are just high enough, I think we can actually get them to ignite. Here we go. Bump that one up. Um, hmm. I'm gonna say probably like I'm gonna say eleven, just because of how like dangerous that is. Like, I feel like that could kill you. It could light your house on fire and be really dangerous. So. <laughs> Craziness. I mean, he lit, he lit his house on fire. He filled a water bottle full of gasoline and lit his house on fire. It's not, this is not safe. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> well, I do have a fire extinguisher. I don't really want to use Why? <laughs> Definitely should use it. I don't know. That looks like a pretty dicey situation. I think his table might be on fire there. <laughs> I don't want to. Also, he's probably filling his house with, house with like carbon monoxide. Wait, is he filling his house with house with carbon monoxide by burning a bunch of gasoline? Yeah. Th um. Why? <laughs> This video is so dangerous. Why? Why? He caused a gasoline explosion in his house. Why? Use my fire extinguisher. I'm just gonna put this out manually. <laughs> Stop, drop, and roll, right? No. Dude, just use the extinguisher. What the heck? He lit the towel on fire. We Everything gotta smother that fire. fire. I need a wet rag. Oh wait, never mind. I'm doing okay. <laughs> Did it! Holy. Oh my god. Dude! He scorched his ceiling! Oh my gosh! Guys, what the heck? He actually scorched his ceiling! <laughs> never do that! His house is probably full of, like, carbon dioxide, and he- He burned his ceiling. I'm reacting to dangerous King of Random videos I found. He froze gasoline and then lit it off. It caused a small explosion in his house. His house is now full of gasoline waste, probably. He also- there's a scorch mark on his roof. Don't do that stuff. I know. I'm reacting to it. <laughs> Dude, that looks like a bomb went off oh on goodness. the ceiling. Oh no, that's even that looks even worse than it did from the wide shot. That's like charred. That's incredible. Alright. That's incredible. This is so dangerous. Lesson learned. Well, it's actually really impressive how well my workbench held up to all that. <laughs> what? I'm super impressed. You might think that was stupid, but I was actually expecting that to happen. Wait, what? He was expecting it, but he still did it. Hmm. Why? I am very surprised that he didn't set his house on fire. There is a... There was a scorch mark on the roof. That fire hit the roof. So let's talk about what just happened here today. We started out with the purpose of trying to see whether or not frozen gasoline would ignite. And not only did we find that it does ignite, but- And he ended up almost burning down his house with a giant gasoline. Actually burst into a very energetic flame. Next, we tried freezing a spoon and scooping up multiple chunks of gasoline and placing a match down in the middle, where we found that it burst into flames, spattered around all over the place. What? I know you're smart enough not to do that, but. 
not probably good to watch crazy stuff like that. I'm reacting. There's bad stuff on YouTube too, bud. I'm reacting to it. Eventually, liquid. What? What do you mean you're reacting to it? What does that mean? Like for a Guineas and Chill video. Oh, okay. And I checked the copyright guidelines. It's under fair use, like reacting. Find the gasoline to and returning to burn like normal. We found that if you take a lit match and place it into a container of liquid nitrogen, it will go out every single time. But we also found out that if you have enough frozen gasoline in the container, it can take off with such a vigorous reaction that it can bypass that nitrogen layer, suck in all the air that wants, and cause a massive explosion. Which almost resulted in an insurance claim. What? So in conclusion, I think we can confirm that frozen gasoline will burn. Not only There's also like one other video that... I didn't see, but... Dang. This is so dang... Okay. Uh, it was like, um... Um... It was a lot more... It was hey guys, video. welcome back to the King of Random this Cooking Show, where today we're cooking with a fun little chemical called potassium chloride. Now it's that time of year where these little marshmallow peeps start popping up all around the local grocery store. So I ran down and picked up a few... Basically, he's going to delete the peeps. Boxes to see if they would assist us with our... Using potassium chlorate, which is kind of dangerous because... Chlorine. Chemical experiment. It's like... It's, it's three chlorine atoms. Today. Now, in addition to these seasonal... It's releasing a lot of chlorine gas when he's doing this. It's not super dangerous, but... Flavors here. I also Not picked safe. up some pink bunny rabbits as well as some white Easter eggs. Not that it makes any kind of a difference to the reaction itself, it just adds a little variety. So, what exactly is potassium chlorate? Well, let me tell you a little bit about this cool chemical substance I have in my possession today. As you can see, potassium chlorate is a very fine white crystalline substance. Now, this. Basically, what he's gonna do is he's gonna melt this, and whenever you melt potassium chlorate, potassium chlorate is a strong oxidizer. Whenever you melt it, it becomes really reactive. And it will, once it's melted, it will react with almost any organic material, including humans. So. Stuff's been reduced down to a very, very fine powder because it's used for pyrotechnics. I got this stuff from a pyrotechnics supply company because it's a very strong oxidizer used in manufacturing fireworks but it's also the main component in the match heads you have in your box of matches at home. It's a very reactive material once it's mixed with a fuel, but by itself, it actually won't burn. Instead, if we can throw enough heat at it, we can actually get it to melt down because it's actually got a melting point around 672 degrees. It's, it's also sort of dangerous. I looked at like the safety data sheet by like, I don't know, who makes the safety data sheet? I don't know, the war, I don't know, probably the United Nations or something, and inhaling potassium chlorate can, uh, it's, it's not a good chemical to inhale, it's sort of bad, yeah, who would have guessed that it's bad to inhale high-powered rocket oxidizers? Fahrenheit. Especially so this is the purpose of our powder. experiment today. Let's melt down our potassium chlorate into a hot molten bath, then take one of our little marshmallow peeps and let them go for a swim and observe what happens. It really looks and feels a lot like powdered sugar. Yeah, which is probably kind of dangerous. Because you do not want to eat it. Eating that is very bad. That should be more than enough. So quick update on what I'm thinking here, guys. We're gonna get this stuff up to about 700 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'd really like the reaction to take place inside of a glass. Now the problem is, glass is sensitive to thermal shock, and if we take a blowtorch to it, it'll probably shatter into a million pieces. So what I'm hoping we can do is liquefy the potassium chlorate in the pan first and transfer it slowly into the glass, where it may have a little bit better chance of staying intact. If it does, we should be good to go, and if it doesn't, we'll just find another way. I'm using a map gas torch, which produces a very, very hot flame. So I'm just going to sweep that back and forth over the white powder until it liquid- That he just blow- <laughs> From the perspective, it just looked like he blowtorched his hand, but I don't think Plies. he did. And I've never actually liquefied potassium what? chlorate before, so I'm very interested to see how this looks. Glasses on for safety, let's rock. There we go. 
You can actually already see at the top there, parts of it are liquefying and melting down. And the edges here are spewing. It looks like they're reacting with something. Maybe that's the nonstick surface of the pan itself. Not exactly sure. But it doesn't look like it's taking too much to melt this down. It's definitely a different reaction than- It melts at like 700 degrees, I think. And if you were to try this with sugar, the sugar would just burn and turn black. But you can see this is turning into a uh, very translucent. It almost looks like molten salt. Oh, freeze frame pause be like thick. Liquid syrup. not sticking anymore that's a good sign it's probably so what are those bubbles it's probably so dangerous when heated because most reaction it's probably most reactions require energy and so it probably the more energy it has the fact like how if you put something in sulfuric acid it'll have a runaway reaction it's probably something like that our potassium chloride is completely molten. Yo, what, what was that sound effect? That was like a Star Trek sound effect where it's like... <laughs> before the ships go at like 5,000 liters. And now it's not even sticking to the pot anymore. So let's go ahead and transfer it to glass. My only concern is whether or not the glass will hold up. There's a possibility it'll just crack and splatter this stuff everywhere. Get that glass warmed up a little bit. Very carefully make the transfer. Cool, holding up so far. Now that we've got our potassium chlorate completely liquefied, let's take one of our fruit punch flavored peeps and let him go for a swim. Ooh, pretty. Oh, this one looks like he's crying. Oh, that's so wrong, isn't it? What? Oh, that's so messed up, but that's so funny. <laughs> Why did he say that? What's gonna happen? Three, two, one. That would happen to your finger, so yeah, dangerous. Maybe not, probably wouldn't kill you, but you might, you'd probably go to the ER, so that that's like a 10. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, there goes the glass. That is crazy. I can't believe how quickly that took off. It was just like instant reaction, just burst right into flames, like the second it made contact. There was barely enough time to get my hands away. Guys, you gotta come check this out. There is nothing left of that red peep, look. It is completely disintegrated. All that's left is a little tiny bit of black ash residue, but other than that, it is gone. And you can see our potassium chlorate has actually solidified again back into this big white blob. Whoop, there it goes. Oh, sweet. So it looks like this stuff is castable. Look at that. Yeah, that... Okay, let's... Rate this. 10 only by trained professionals. Extreme caution slash major injury risk. Yeah, I'd say that. So... Yes, I am Peeps. So I guess the most dangerous is the flamethrower. 13. Which, yeah, that makes sense. The flamethrowers are the most dangerous. Because they could explode. They could cause a massive explosion. Probably. If they went off next to someone. And, uh, like imagine you filled. Like. A fire extinguisher. Full of. Gasoline. Like. And then detonate. And then like. Caused fire in there. It wouldn't be that bad. Because there would be no oxygen. But they were pumping oxygen in at high pressure, so it would be an even higher pressure than normal if it detonated. 
and gas vapor could build up, and there's probably a lot of oxygen, so that, I guess, is the most dangerous thing of right now. Okay, bye, and I'm gonna get to editing. Um, see you on YouTube.